Hello everyone! In this video, I'm gonna talk about my Ninetales build. Ninetales has been consistently strong since the start of Pokemon Unite because of its ability to deal damage and support at the same time. Ninetales is the jack of all trade being able to attack from range and provide heavy crowd control from its ability with relative tankiness due to a war veil and buddy barrier. If you enjoy doing damage while supporting your teammates, then Ninetales is the perfect Pokemon for you. So without further ado, let's get started with the build. First off, we have Dazzling Gleam. This ability is unlocked at level 4 and is your best ability for crowd control. The move comes out in a cone in front of Ninetales and stuns all opposing Pokemon, meaning you can potentially stun 5 people in a team fight. Just make sure to position it to hit multiple people for a maximum value as the cooldown is 7.5 seconds so it's not very spammable. At level 11, you can upgrade Dazzling Gleam to deal more damage and stuns longer. Overall, this ability is just too good at controlling teamfights and can heavily influence a fight if used properly. Next, we have a War Veil. This ability is unlocked at level 6 and is your supporting and defensive ability. This move creates a circle around yourself and reduces damage for you and all your allies inside of it. Furthermore, it increases the user's movement speed and makes all their basic attack boosted attack so you can do immense damage and crowd control while being protected. A War Veil can be upgraded at level 13 to reduce even more damage for teamfights in the late game. Overall, this ability is amazing as it's overloaded with benefits to yourself and your teammates. Moving on, we have the Held Items. Muscle Band will be your offensive items as it provides attack and attack speed so it helps a lot in the early game and scales decently for the late game. Since Ninetales only have one damaging ability, most of your damage will come from your basic attack and passive, so Muscle Band is great to make sure you do the maximum amount of damage. You do not need special attack items on Ninetales with this build. Next will be the defensive item Buddy Barrier. This item is simply too strong as it gives HP as the base stats and provides a 40% max shield to yourself and an ally when you use your Unite move. So your supporting capability increase even more. Truthfully speaking, this item should be on every Pokemon in the game because its benefit it provides is too valuable throughout the whole entire game. Finally, we have our item Focus Band. The reason why I run two defensive items instead of another offensive item here is because of the base damage of every Pokemon in the game is extremely high. So even without items, you will end up doing a lot of damage meaning survivability is the most important aspect. By being alive, you will end up doing more damage over time and impact the game more. Focus Band provides defense and special defense as the base stats, which Ninetales desperately needs because as an attacker, its defensive stats are really low even at level 15. Additionally, the healing passive from Focus Band will keep you alive in most situations where you're getting flanked by speedsters. You will realize how much less you die in each game with this item and it's amazing. Alright, now we have our battle item. The best option is the eject button. This item offers a much needed escape option for Ninetales because you do not have any free dashes in your abilities so it's difficult to escape when you're getting flanked. Additionally, you can also eject offensively to better position your dazzling gleam and unite move to hit multiple enemies that can potentially win you the game. Eject button offers too much utility and it's great for every Pokemon in the game. Now I'll be showing you a gameplay of Ninetales and explaining how to play the early game, the mid game, and the late game. Let's get started. Alright, so the start of the game is pretty simple. All you do is get your Powder Snow and just clear, try to get level 3. Here's a little trick that you can do after the second monkey and then the other two ahead. You can just Powder Snow both of them at the same time. Try to save your Powder Snow for this because it'll help you clear a lot faster. Now that you're level 3, you can get your Icy Win and just contest the Aldino in the mid. Try to sync your ability together at the same time so you can burst it down before the enemy has a chance to compete against it. Ninetales is extremely strong because you have two abilities that does a lot of damage and it's AoE range. Now you pretty much just try to clear it down, trying to get level 4. Your next power spike is level 4 due to the fact that you do get your evolution and you unlock your Dazzling Gleam, so... 
always prioritize that over the kills. Unfortunately, I was not able to get level 4 here after the full clear, but that's okay. Um, okay, here at level... A 2v2 actually broke out because my laner decided to walk into it, but it's okay. Because I do have focus band, so I'm walking in front of him to tank for him. And now I get level 4, I get my evolution. This is a really big power spike for me. Here I missed up a little and I missed my Dazzling Gleam, but it's not a big deal. Now we just contest for the bees. Once you're level 4 in Ninetales, getting the bees is extremely easy due to the fact that you still have two abilities that has a lot of AoE, so you just use both and just, you know, pop your Gleam on the bees. You should be able to hit all four of them. If the enemy contests, if they're melee and they walk into the bees, then you can also get the stun on them as well. So Ninetales at level 4 is extremely strong and not many Pokemon can compete against it for the bees. Here the jungler actually stood around for quite a while and my focus band proc so that kept me alive and then I get a 3 man stun here and wow that just pretty much made it so it's impossible for them to do anything to us. And we end up picking up the jungler, very nice, get the stun on the Lucario, force him to go back and that will just give us free time to farm. So now the next power spike is level 6, so you want to get 6 before the Dreadnought spawn at 7 minutes. Um, the reason why Ninetale is so strong and high ranking or even in competitive play is the fact that you can get level 6 very comfortably in lane and be fully prepared for the Dreadnought fight where most Pokemon they only get like their second uh, evolution plus they only have one ability unlock. But at level 6 you actually unlock both your abilities which is really strong. So that's one of the reasons why Ninetales is uh, so consistent in every elo. Now uh, we have we didn't see the Lucario so I'm like okay maybe we could just dive this pretty easily. I tried for a score first but I'm like okay this Wiggly is trying to stop me that's fine. And decided to just go for the kill first and then grab 30 bomb. 30 score I picked the 5 score again and there's Snorlax is here to defend that's okay. Our next goal right here just go play for the bees it spawned again so it's pretty free. The Snorlax actually tried to solo contest this here, and I managed to have my Veil up right before he body slammed, so that blocked a lot of damage from the Snorlax. Here I try for another score, but the Wiggly is back, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna play back, and go for the Dreadnought. And our jungler is here, which is a jungle crystal, which is fine, not a big deal. It doesn't matter which jungler you have, as long as they come down for the Dread, then it's pretty easy take when Ninetales around. Yeah, I'm just pretty much farming it or trying to damage it from afar so I don't take the water gun from the Dreadnought. And I see that Snorlax actually walked into the brush so I'm walking around to try to dodge his heavy slam. And now my focus band actually procced again so that kept me alive and my veil popped up and that's pretty much all she wrote. Now it's pretty easy to do the Dread since their teammates, the enemy is all dead and we just secure it here. That puts us ahead quite a bit. The enemy did get the Rotom top, so we needed this Dread for sure, otherwise we're gonna be behind in pressure. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop the Veil, and I believe... Yeah, the whole entire team showed up, but this fight is actually not that bad for us, since we also have 3 people. Unfortunately, my Crustle knocked the other 2 out of my Unite move, but that didn't really matter. The Charizard used his ulti on my Aurora Veil, so that negated a lot of damage. We managed to break the Bot Tower. Everything is going pretty smoothly in terms of bot lane. Our top lane is losing quite heavily though. And that will come into play later. So I got pretty close to dying multiple times, but because I have defensive items that kept me up alive and I was able to continuously help my team do the objectives. So there's really no more power spike that's that meaningful. I mean level 11 and level 13 you get your ability upgraded, so that's something you can play for. So right now I see that I have, there's 4 top and the thing with Ninetales is that you're extremely good at defending. So you don't need to like go 5 top with your teammates, especially when there is no objective to fight for. Right now the Snorlax is trying to score here, and I can tell he probably has like score shield or whatnot. So I'm just gonna set my goal, defend, and if there's Snorlax is here, that's fine. Because if they don't have their tank, then their team fight is not gonna be as good. And for some reason their Wiggly is also here, so I have to flash out. The Wiggly dropped her Unite move, and I'm just kiting around, kiting around trying to stay alive. So you'll notice that I am quite tanky, even though the Snorlax pushed me away, the Wiggly scored, that's whatever, I try my best to stop them, and I'm not even like close to dying, my focus band actually proc again, so that kept me alive, and there you go, I pretty much chased them off, they have 0 points, I didn't stop them from scoring unfortunately, 
but that's pretty much all I can do at that moment. Now I'm level 10, I just want to try to get level 11 for the next power spike, and then pretty much fight for the next dread that's spawning right now. The enemy team did get the Rotom once again, so they're playing heavily for the Rotom. My jungler is playing for the Dreadnought, so we're trading experience for points at this, at this stage in the game. I'm just gonna pop the Veil so I can have my auto attack be enhanced to help out this Dreadnought. So at this point, we have to get the Dread because we're just so far behind top and I decided to just use my Unite move here to secure it. Which is a pretty good decision because if we lose that while losing the Rotom top as well, then we're just gonna be so far behind and it's gonna be hard to climb back up. At least this way, we can keep up an experience and can potentially fight for the uh, Daptos. Here, I made a pretty silly mistake. I'm not sure if it was a mistake, but I got burned to death like almost instantly by the Charizard. And I checked to see how much damage he did. He did like 4,000 damage to me within like 2-3 to three seconds, which is uh, quite insane to think about. But it's okay, our Crustle managed to pick up the kill. That's all good. And now it's 3 minutes in. So whenever it hits 3 minutes, it's pretty much late game uh, territory. We're down a lot of points at this point. Right? But it's not a big deal. So my thought process is, okay, it's gonna be come down to Zapdos and one of my teammates want to surrender, but it happens. My goal is to just farm for my Unite move at the moment and get it up for the Zapdos fight. Because once we secure Zapdos, we can still pretty much win the game quite easily. So, try to be as strong as possible for the Zapdos fight. Here, click no, obviously, because we can still win. Uh, right here, I should probably just pop my Veil to help me do the bees a bit faster, but for some reason I thought maybe the enemy team will try to contest, but that's really not uh, gonna happen because <laughs> my teammates are heavily pushed in. So I'm very close to my Unite move now, and I'm gonna jump over here, try to get closer to the pit in case the enemy tries to start it. Here a very like intense situation happening. So I see my Crustle hovering top, so... Right now, I'm just hovering around this area, tell my team to gather. My Crusto is gonna look for the 50, so like, okay, I have to somehow distract the enemy and pretty much make them chase me. And the Snorlax took the bait, so I'm like, okay, sure, whatever, my Crusto is gonna 100 top. So that's gonna help us even out the game. I tried to j uh, take the jump pad bottom, trying to get around, and I flashed over the Snorlax, see if I can like, use my Unite move and try to secure the Zapdos if they continue to do it. But as you can see, I'm gonna die here. It's a very strategic death. I decided to not use my Unite move and save it for the next Zapdo fight because I saw my Greninja has also 100 bottom that he got. So at this point, we're winning, right? So the, the only way we can lose is if the enemy takes the Zapdos and the only way... So I need my Unite move to be up, essentially. That's why I decided to not use it to save myself instead save it up for the next fight. Alright, here is a pretty good fight for us. I mean, it's, what, 4v2 and we ended up just wiping them. Pretty easily, the Snorlax melted in the Absol ulti and I upgraded my Veil at level 13. So I still have my Unite move pretty handily. I think, um, right now, the Venusaur came out of nowhere, but I got the stun on him, so we ended up getting the pick quite easily. And my Unite move didn't really use the fight for the fight, but I used it to secure the Zapdos and that essentially just won us the game. But yeah, uh, we won lane pretty high, but top lane lost due to the enemy just focusing on the Rotom. So right now, if we just defend, we just win the game. So when you're playing Ninetales, you gotta play more of a control mage playstyle and try to use your Veil in the backline, support your carries, and pretty much create a path of escape for your tanks. And that's pretty much it for the Ninetales build. Just understand the power spike, understand the timing, and each game should be good. Use your Unite move for the Zapdos fight. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. I'll continue to make more guys like this. And that'll be all for now. Goodbye, guys.